Hi everyone, Dr. Becky here from drbeckyfitness.com. We're going to talk today about eating for one or dieting for one, which might be your case. Um, it can present certain challenges and uh, we also see that research backs up that it can be challenging. Not that we need research to tell us that if you do live alone, um, but it seems like we research just about anything nowadays. What they find though is that when we live alone, we tend to eat the same thing over and over again. Uh, we eat fewer nutrient-rich foods like your vegetables, fruits, and uh, fish. And we fall into bad eating patterns. So we might forego dinner because, ah, uh, what's the point of cooking? Uh, just give me a pop a thing of popcorn into the microwave, right? And, I'll, and that'll suffice for the evening. So this is not going to give us the nutritional needs that our body body wants uh, and it's not going to help us if we want to lose weight. So I wanted to focus on a couple of people that I've worked with recently who found themselves living alone. Uh, Steve is a 49-year-old man, recently divorced, was a family man, now found himself cooking for himself for the first time in about 21 years. Uh, his extent of meal preparation was slim to none, basically just calling the pizza guy uh, every now and then on the weekend was pretty much the only meal preparation that he had ever really uh, encountered and didn't really even have an, an idea of what healthy eating looked like. Now he wasn't really interested in weight loss, he had actually lost some weight, uh, probably mostly from the emotional stress that he was dealing with, but uh, he wanted to eat healthy. And then Carol is the other person that we're going to to highlight here. She's in her early 60s, um, recently widowed actually, and found herself cooking now for one. Uh, really missed the social aspect of cooking. Um, now looked at cooking as a little bit depressing, not really worthwhile, what's the point type of a thing. So we needed to find some strategies that the two of these could use uh, that would be effective for them so that they could get nutrients. Um, Carol also, I should mention, wanted to lose weight. She had about 25 pounds she had been trying to lose back and forth for the past two years and was just frustrated with not being able to lose it. So we had to also come up with strategies that were going to help in the weight loss category as well. Now, maybe you don't find yourself in one of these two scenarios, but may and maybe you don't live alone full time. Maybe you have a spouse who travels a lot. Or maybe you are the only one in the household who is committed to dieting. So all of these different scenarios create different problems for us. So let's look at a, a few strategies. The first thing we want to do, and uh, this applies specifically to, to Steve, what we told him to focus on were foods that were had a high nutrient to calorie ratio. So you want to look for foods that are going to give your body the most nutrients, the most vitamins and minerals, and, and the fewest calories. So let's go down through a list. This is where you want to focus your diet and go when you're going to the grocery store, what you want to focus on. Top of the list, non-starchy vegetables, extremely low in calories, very high in vitamins and minerals. These are your leafy greens, your broccolis and cauliflowers, your asparagus, your tomatoes, your onions, your mushrooms, those types of things in the produce aisle. Next on the list is beans. Beans are often overlooked on diets. They shouldn't be overlooked if you're looking for healthy weight loss. They are packed with fiber, packed with vitamins and minerals that are really going to help you lose weight and stay, stay healthy. Uh, you can, if you're looking for convenience, eat uh, beans right out of the can that's going to give you a little bit more sodium but you know at times like this when you're looking for ways to eat better on your own um, you have to pick your battles so if sodium is not a problem for you you can eat beans right out of the can next down on the list fruits fruits uh, some people are concerned especially if they're trying to wait, lose weight with eating fruit because of the natural sugars there's Yes, there's natural sugars in fruit. However, there's also fiber and lots and lots of nutrients. Those things counteract the, the sugar. They actually slow the absorption of the sugar. The high nutrients also 
act as a, a natural hunger and cravings shut off switch. So you're going to benefit from, from having fruit in your diet when you're on a, either a healthy eating plan or a healthy weight loss plan. Next down on the list, nuts and seeds. Uh, high in calories, yes. High in nutrients, yes. So that's why they're, they're you know, going to be in our diet when we're, we're eating by ourselves. Now, if you're going to eat them as a snack, you do have to watch your portion size. I recommend that you don't go over a, an ounce of nuts or seeds a day if you're looking to lose weight. What does that look like? Well, uh, it's about two tablespoons of whatever nut or seed that you're you're using. Uh, if you're looking at almonds, probably about 20 almonds is about an ounce. Next down, then we're going to have some of our, uh, what we usually think of our protein foods, which would be your meats, fish, eggs. And at the, at the next level down, we're going to have our whole grains and starchy vegetables. So starchy vegetables are like your corn and potatoes. Grains would be, you know, the, you can have quinoa, you can have sprouted grain types of, of breads, uh, whole wheats, things of that sort. These foods do have some vitamins and, and minerals, but they have more calories, so their nutrient to calorie ratio is not as great. So you can have some of those uh, a, a little bit more limited. Foods you want to stay away from are your processed foods, your fried foods, um, Dairies and cheese, you, can, you should limit those. Uh, they probably are closer to the category with grains and, and starchy vegetables, especially if you're trying to lose weight. All right, so that kind of gives us a frame, uh, an idea of what we want to look for as far as food choices. Now, when you're living by yourself, simplicity is going to be your friend. And more complicated you try to make things, the less you're going to be uh, apt to stick with it. So we created for Steve a, a healthy eating framework. So here, let me give you two meal plans, menu, menu plans that you could, could follow. So breakfast, lunch, and dinner. So breakfast, think fruit. Lunch, salad, dinner, soup. Um, the fruit, if the fruit's not enough, you can always throw some seeds or nuts with that. You can put grain, a grain with that, like oatmeal. Uh, on my website, I'll leave, I'll leave a link below the video here uh, is a, a way to prepare that I call it Dr. Becky's oatmeal. I have it most mornings. Uh, salad, always a good lunch staple. And you can put different things on it. You can put uh, chicken strips on it if you'd like. Dinner, soup, uh, especially a vegetable and bean soup is always going to be a great choice. Uh, there's some, you know, homemade soups always going to be your better choice, but there's also some canned soups that will uh, suffice for you and that are healthier, a little bit lower in sodium. I'll, I'll uh, put a link to those as well in, on uh, underneath our video here. So enough, that, uh, let's go to sample menu number two. Uh, if you don't want to go with fruit, salad, and soup, then you could go with uh, a protein in the morning. Eggs work just, just fine. Um, then go with a salad and have a lean meat with a side of steamed vegetables at, at dinner time. So eggs, salad, and uh, protein with vegetables works well also. Just keep a simple framework so that you wake up every morning and there's not confusion about what to eat. You know what your day is going to be looking like. All right, um, meals. Keep meals simple. Uh, Carol was now faced with the fact that uh, she didn't want to be cooking these large meals. She found it a little bit, a little bit depressing. So she wanted to move a little bit less away, uh, more away from cooking uh, to simpler meals. So here's some suggestions that you can you can use in in your day to day life. Uh, rotisserie chicken and a big side of steamed vegetables works really well. Prepare it in ten minutes flat. Uh, steamed vegetables, frozen vegetables work absolutely great. Just take a bag out of your freezer, cut it off, stick it in the microwave or stick it in some hot water and cook it and they're ready to go. Uh, another, another thing that would be good is, is always going to be the soups I talked about with the canned soups. 
a very quick, easy meal, good things to have stocked in your pantry. Uh, another thing would be um, taco salad. Uh, you can take ground turkey, mix it with taco, taco seasoning, put that on top of leafy greens with tomatoes and onions, and you have a nice, healthier version of a, a more greasy Mexican type of a meal. So keep your meals nice and, and tight, nice and simple. Snacks. Now Steve had an issue around snacking. He was choosing snacks that he felt were, were healthy because the package said they were healthy or they, that was kind of the, the uh, image of the snack. So he was eating things like energy bars, granola bars, whole wheat crackers, pretzels. Now these snacks are all grain based. And if you're looking for the optimum health or you're looking for healthy weight loss, grain-based snacks are not going to be your best choice because by the time they get to your grocer's grocery shelf, they have been uh, stripped of a lot of their nutrients. They've been refined and really they get into your they go into your stomach and they get into your intestines and they go into your bloodstream extremely quickly, which encourages fat storage. So a better option always is going to be your vegetables. Now, vegetables don't always seem like the most appealing snack. So you can use a, a dip that's on the healthier side. Hummus works just fine. A low sugar salad dressing will work just fine. Uh, if you've never tried almond butter, that can be a satisfying uh, addition to a, a vegetable snack. Fruit works fine for a a snack, um, like I talked about, if uh, you're worried about sugars, fruits have natural fiber and, and nutrients that are going to counter those, so they work just fine. Um, fruit with nuts will work really well for you as well. Another option um, for a, a healthy snack, uh, you know, we we hear about microwave popcorn and we think, well, it's popcorn, right? It's, it can be healthy. Well. The microwave popcorn that we get from the stores that comes in those packages contains an awful lot of chemicals if you ever read the ingredients list. You can make microwave popcorn very easily by just dumping a quarter cup of popcorn kernels into a paper bag, a little lunch bag, tape it shut, stick it in your microwave for about two or three minutes and it pops up just really nicely. I will put a link to uh, how to do that below this video as well. And that can be a, a decent snack for you as well. Next uh, tip for when we're living alone, keep busy. And I probably should say keep your hands busy. Idle hands want to eat. So if late night sitting in front of the TV is the time for you that really you struggle with, find ways to keep your hands busy. Uh, Carol was into photography, so she we we worked with her to figure out how to uh, spend some time on the computer at night with refinishing or whatever you do with phot photographs. Um, but it kept her it kept her busy. Uh, it was a lot different than when she would be sitting on the couch and have idle hands that just wanted to to eat. Um, if you're not into photography, there's a lot of different options. Maybe you like jigsaw puzzles. Uh, computer games, um, maybe you like crossword puzzles, maybe you knit, maybe you like doing crafts, maybe you like refinishing things. Something that's going to keep your hands busy is going to keep you from putting food up to your mouth. A cooking buddy. Carol, we had mentioned earlier, one of the aspects that she really missed was the social aspect of cooking. And a cooking buddy was a good solution for her. So when you're making large meals that like homemade soup for instance, well you end up eating that for four or five nights in a row, you get tired of it. So instead she would cook large meals and then give half of it away. And you can work with a friend and you guys can do that back and forth. Um, just a, a, something to keep in mind. And lastly, keep it sane and simple. When you're eating by yourself, the, the best way to stay on a healthy path is to just keep it simple. Keep a simple structure. On my website, I have a free video series that shows you four daily habits that when you follow them, 
really, especially if you're interested in losing weight, they give your body no choice but to lose weight. They bring nutrients into your body, keep your calories just naturally low. So keep it simple, keep it sane. Uh, if you like those four daily habits to follow, you can find them over on my website, drbeckyfitness.com. And thanks for watching. If you uh, benefited from these tips and you'd like more like this, please subscribe to my YouTube channel and we'll see you next time.